We're going to take a look at the Extuga U250 wireless microphone system. And thank you to Extuga for sponsoring this video by providing this unit. Now, the particular unit that I have, I ordered from Amazon. And it was just a random pull from inventory. So it hasn't received any special QA attention. And it should be representative of what you'll receive when you order one. When I saw the sales literature for this unit, I was intrigued. I thought, with this feature set and these specifications, this could be a very nice unit. I'm definitely interested in checking it out. And then when I saw the price, I was shocked. And I thought, if this delivers at this price point, it is tremendous value. Now, a lot of wireless microphone systems are pretty expensive. And so there are applications where I'd like to use a wireless mic, but I have my reservations because of the cost of the equipment. For example, a wedding DJ. A wireless mic is a perfect application where you can pass the microphone around to audience members who want to give a short speech or congratulate the new bride and groom. But I've also had those episodes where I've watched somebody's Uncle Ned handling the microphone and thinking, please don't drop my mic in the river, okay? Or when you're done with it, please don't throw it across the room and hope that the other person can catch it. Whereas with this unit, well, I'd still prefer they don't do those things. It would be tragic to have somebody break your equipment, but it wouldn't be financially devastating. The Extuga unit sells for about the price of a standard wired microphone. And so for the price of a wired microphone, you can get an entire wireless system. And not just that, you don't get one microphone, but you get two wireless microphones and a dual receiver. Pretty impressive. So I'm anxious to take a look at it and show you what's in the box and we'll see how well it performs and uh, let's check it out. So when you order the product, it comes in a package like so, a nice cardboard box. And inside of the box is another box, which is a display box. With a handle that looks like this. So, the packaging seems very nice. Let's take a look inside. So, let's see what's in the box. We have a bit of foam packing. And it looks like everything is nicely packed in here. Let me move this out. We have a signal cable, which is a tip sleeve unbalanced audio cable. I guess that's a bonus. We have a small power transformer to power the unit. AC power to a uh, Power plug. Two antennas that have standard BNC type connectors on them and they're articulating so they can bend up. That feels nice, seems very nice. And we get two of those guys. We get two transmitter units. Like so. This feels nice. And 
and uh, like I mentioned, it comes with two. Everything seems very nicely packaged. Those two look identical, like so. And we get a couple of these rubbery plastic rings, which I believe are probably used to go onto the transmitter unit, like so. So when you set it down, it doesn't roll around and maybe it encourages people to keep their hands away from the controls, maybe. I don't know. That seems optional. They're different colors, so you can identify which microphone is which when people are roaming around on stage. I guess that's, that's cool. And then we get the receiver. The, my first impressions here is everything seems really nice. Um, open that up. There we go. It's a metal box. Mm-hmm. It looks um, a good fit and finish. This is the dual band or dual unit receiver. Back side has the connections for audio out, antennas, and power. Pretty straightforward. Okay. And we get an instruction manual, which is pretty simple. There isn't whole lot of instructions. And so that's what's in the box. Let's take a little closer look at each of the individual components and then we'll plug it in and give it a try see how well it works for us. The instructions are pretty simple. It's only a uh, couple of pages of instructions. It appears like the operation is real simple. We just pair a transmitter to the receiver by holding down a button on the receiver for a couple of seconds, which will automatically find an open channel and it will communicate between the receiver and the transmitter unit via infrared to get both of those units paired up on the same channel. That seems pretty cool. I see in the instruction packet here a page of specifications and those specifications also include specifications for a body pack type transmitter so that may be an option. These instructions appear to be a direct translation from Chinese and so my suggestion to companies like this would be might be a good idea to hire somebody who is a native speaker of whatever your target language is to do a quick proofread and edit on your instructions to make sure that they're properly expressed in the target language. The transmitter unit looks like it's got a good fit and finish. It's very nice. It, it feels good. And um, it does feel a little bit like what it is, which is a hollow aluminum tube. If you were to grab a microphone, a standard wired microphone like an SM58, that feels like one complete solid chunk of metal. This feels like it isn't quite as solid, but it's not. It's got electronics in the middle of it, so it feels like exactly what it is. But, of course, having said that, the fit and finish looks very nice, and it... Um, appears to be exactly what it is. There is a power switch on the body here which you depress to turn it on and that switch has nice tactile feel to it. It feels like quality. I have my thoughts that it might be better to put the power switch down on the bottom of the unit just so it isn't accidentally actuated by somebody using the microphone. 
but I don't think it's really an issue. I think it would take a pretty intentional press to get this switch to actuate. So I would not anticipate somebody accidentally hitting that while they're using the microphone. I don't think that's really any issue at all. There's a uh, little LCD screen right above it. And so we'll take a look at that in just a moment. This is a cardioid microphone, so it should have good side rejection. We'll test that. And to get to the battery compartment, we just unscrew the lower part of the case and that comes off and it's a aluminum tube. There are some pretty significant threads down on the bottom of the tube and on the bottom of the microphone which is what this threads onto and holds in place. The microphone is powered by a pair of double A batteries which go right in here and I like that. I like that a lot. There's a lot of wireless microphones that are powered by 9 volt batteries and 9 volt batteries are expensive whereas double A's are much less expensive and I use double A's in a lot of devices and so I have a stock of rechargeable double A's and I recharge those batteries so that really saves on the battery cost. So the ability to use rechargeable double A batteries is a huge plus for me. So we're going to put some batteries in this and um, check the weight. Unscrewing the bottom. Plus and the battery goes downward. There's a couple of little spring clips right here which hold the battery securely in place. Very nice. And they go in there like so. That feels very nice. Put the bottom back on. With the batteries in the transmitter unit, it's got a good solid feel to it. It feels slightly hefty. I push the power button, it powers right up. And it shows me channel number, battery condition, and there's also an indication saying gain. I don't see anything in the manual that references that. Some transmitter units have a ability to switch to a high gain or a low gain, so there might be something like that, but that feels good. Let's measure the weight. Using an accurate digital scale, I weighed the wireless microphone and a Shure SM58. The Shure SM58 comes in at 0.75 pounds. The wireless microphone comes in at 0 0.70 pounds. So both of these are very close in weight, very similar. With this one being ever so slightly lighter. And this is the weight with rechargeable batteries installed. The batteries that you choose may have some small impact on the weight, of course. The microphone feels really good in the hand. There's no looseness, no rattles, nothing like that. Looks good. So let's um, take a little closer look at the controls and the display. The fit and finish looks great. We have a display with just one button for power and we can push it temporarily to turn the display back on. Down near the bottom we have the antenna and to get to the batteries we just unscrew the lower half oh, just looks like so and that reveals the batteries fit and finish looks really good let's take a little closer look at that display. So let's take a little closer look at the microphone. You can see the fit and finish is really quite nice. To turn it on we just press the power switch for a moment and it comes right up and it tells us that we're on channel 105. There's a full battery, there's a battery indicator and it says gain 
if we want to turn that display back on, we can just tap the power switch for a quick second and it comes back up. And to turn it off, we just hold down the power switch for a moment until the microphone goes off. Very simple. One thing that I find just a little bit curious is that it appears the LCD display is a little bit below the clear window in the mic. And that, that's fine. Perhaps that's because this is also an infrared transmitter receiver under there, so they need to have a little room for that. But as you can see, the microphone fit and finish. Looks very nice. Give you a closer look at the battery compartment. Like so. So the handheld transmitters seem like pretty nice units. Let's take a look at the receiver next. Looking at the rear panel of the receiver, we have power input, BNC connectors for the antennas, which are standard BNC connectors. I like that. Balanced XLR outputs for microphones one and two, and the quarter inch output, which undoubtedly is unbalanced based upon the cable that they provided for us, which is a mix of microphones one and two. And you can adjust the relative mix by the volume controls on the front of the unit. Pairing the receiver and the transmitter isn't really as well documented as I think it should be. Hold him for a couple of seconds and it will scan and find an available open channel. And then we point the microphone display window at the display window on the receiver and push that button one more time and then they're paired up. So that works really well and that's super easy and it's been very reliable until I figured out the trick that I have to push this button one more time after doing the frequency search. Uh, I was a little bit flummoxed by it but the device is working great and you just have to know how to operate it. So, so far my impressions are very positive. The fit and finish, the build quality looks quite good. There's no unusual English translation stuff on any of the markings on the box. And so, um, it looks like it's working really well. Let's plug in the audio and take a listen to it and see how well it sounds. Here we have the Shure SM58 and the U250 wireless side by side listening to exactly the same source, me. And so you can take a listen to these two different microphones, one after another or side by side, to get a feel for how they compare to each other. The SM58 isn't the most accurate reference microphone in the world, but it is one of the most popular vocal microphones in the world. So chances are, if you have a wired mic and you're going to swap it out with a wireless mic, well, this is probably where you're coming from. And so you can get a comparison between the SM58 and the U250 to see how these two mics sound similar or different from each other. One thing I would mention is I believe that the U250 microphone is more directional. It seems to be a extreme hypercardioid. And if I get off axis, it really drops out rapidly. So if I move off axis, that microphone drops out. And I'll move over this way as well so you can... The SM58 does. I'll get back a little bit. And so you can see that... The behavior of this U250 mic is that it really focuses on the sound right in front of it. And I think that's a good thing for the applications it'll be put into. So 
hopefully this test has given you a bit of an impression as to what the sound character of the U250 microphone is compared to a standard vocal microphone like a Shure SM58. For my next test, I'm going to go for a walk. And I'm going to let you look at the signal indicator as I walk away from the unit so you can see if we get any signal degradation. Now, I'm on the first channel right here. And you can see this is my audio level as I speak. And the bar graph next to that is the radio frequency signal level. So if we start having any signal issues, you should see that bar graph start dipping down. This unit is rated for over 300 feet from receiver to transmitter. And I don't think that I have that much space in this building to roam around. However, I do have some walls that I'll be getting behind, which should block some signal. So we'll see if we get solid signal, even as I start going through different areas of the building and behind some walls. So I'll just walk away and talk to you for a little bit as I go through some of these other areas of the building. And we'll see if we can maintain a solid signal as I have now traveled down a hallway and there's a fair amount of building material between myself and the receiver. I've just gone behind a big brick wall, which uh, might be a bit challenging. I'll go up to another level. And uh, as we continue walking along through the building, getting to the far side of the building now, and we've got quite a lot of building material between this transmitter unit and the receiver. So, as you can see, you can watch the radio frequency indicator bar graph to tell whether or not we're getting any signal dropouts. But I've put quite a bit of building material between myself and the receiver. So we'll see how well the connection is hung together between these two units. Now, the location that I'm in doesn't have a lot of other radio frequency activity happening. So one thing I don't really have the ability to easily test is potential interference from other sources. But this unit does operate on its own unique band, so it really shouldn't experience interference from other services. So now I'm back next to where the receiver unit is, and we'll continue on with our testing by checking the battery life of the transmitters. So how long do the batteries last in the U250 handheld transmitters? I don't know. A long time. I put a fresh set of batteries into each of these transmitter units and let them run with a stopwatch by them to see how long we could get out of a set of batteries. And I figured it would be a few hours. Well, at nearly six hours later, the power indicators on the microphones had only dropped by a single bar. So the batteries last a really long time. I think that with you putting in a fresh set of batteries, you could probably go for all night long on any typical performance without any issues at all. So I stopped the test at about six hours and said, okay, I give up. The batteries, they last long enough. And the fact that they're double A batteries, and in my case, rechargeables, it would be really easy for me to carry an extra set of batteries. And it's really inexpensive to carry an extra set of batteries. And I don't think you'll have any issues at all with battery life or runtime of these transmitter units. So what are my overall impressions? Well, pretty darn positive. I think this system represents tremendous value. I think the microphones sound good. The signal strength seems to be excellent. I wandered all around this building with no discernible dropouts whatsoever. The battery life is fantastic. The build quality seems quite good. Actually, surprisingly good for the price point that we're at. What are the downsides? 
uh, the documentation is a little bit lacking, and the documentation doesn't very well address the frequency setup and microphone pairing. But once you understand how to do it, it's super simple, and it works great. But the instructions could have been a bit more clear. The microphone seems to have a minor issue with plosives, that is, those impulse P-type sounds. I had a couple instances where I had those plosives come through the microphone, and so right now I am just put a inexpensive foam filter over the mic, which I think will address that issue. It's not a big issue. I just noticed it once or twice. I think the microphone overall sounds pretty good. And it's a little bit more clear sounding than an SM58. But uh, I have no issue with the sound of it, at least in my limited testing here. I really like the fact that the microphone has such tight pattern. It's a super cardioid or hyper cardioid microphone that once you get off axis, you drop right out. So it's really good at rejecting all the background noise. And it should also be helpful for reducing the potential of feedback with your PA system. So I like that. Uh, the build quality overall seems really good. The microphone feels good in your hand. And so I think this is a tremendous value. Now, I've only been able to do short-term testing. I can't speak to long-term reliability. I have no reason to believe that there's any issue. But as with any piece of new gear, I would use it for a while in a practice situation before doing a critical show with anything. But my impressions are super positive. I think it's a great product. And... This is the Extuga U250 wireless system. You get two microphones and the receiver, everything you need for about the same price or maybe even just a little bit less than a standard wired microphone. So that's two mics for the price of one and they're wireless. How can you beat that? So thanks again to Extuga for giving me the opportunity to take a look at this product. And if you're interested in purchasing the U250 wireless microphone system, there will be a link down below this video, which you can click on that will bring you over to Amazon and let you grab one of these for yourself. Thanks for watching the video. I hope that it was interesting and helpful for you. And I hope to see you again soon on another upcoming episode.